Deep in the woods, hidden among hills and trees, there's fresh beer being brewed. I'm not talking about a small do-it-yourself operation. This beer is owned and operated by the monks of St. Joseph's Abbey in a brand new futuristic brewery. A tradition passed down for centuries, raising funds for their monasteries from the work of their own hands. These monks started with making jelly, but now brew the first Trappist ale in the United States, right down the road in Spencer, Mass. From the ground to your glass, the process is broken down by Father Isaac. So beer is an agricultural product. It's produced from a whole grain. You can think of it as liquid bread. But Trappist beer traditionally always has had a nutritional value. So that's kind of why I, I popped that in there. So, okay, so harvest the grain, malt it, which means just slightly sprout it. Um, and brewing is really converting the starch, which the, the grain is predominantly, uh, into sugars of different lengths. And then turning that over to this microorganism, a yeast. And then the yeast converts the sugar to carbon dioxide and alcohol. Creates green beer, uh, like a green apple. Uh, not quite ripe, and then we're going to let it age for a short period of time and temperature condition it, then bottle it by adding more yeast and sometimes dosing with a little sugar so that we can produce about uh, maybe eight grams of carbon dioxide in the bottle so we don't add additional CO2. And that bottle conditioning creates the CO2, raises the alcohol level, and enhances the flavor and makes it the kind of drink that is great to share with uh, friends and families and generally create uh, some kind of community. From the silo, once it's, once it's harvested and malted, from the silo to, uh, to, your, to your table, it would be, uh, say, six weeks. Jelly to beer? You may wonder how that transition happened. Around the year 2000, uh, our rabbit started looking over the situation and we could see that um, the number of people entering was at a slower rate than in the past. The predominant group was growing older. We have this commitment to live by the work of our own hands. Jelly is really labor intensive. And we could see that uh, with a, with a a population that isn't renewing itself at the same rate as before, our expenses are going to rise more rapidly than our ability to generate income. So we said, we need to get some outside help about how do we solve this. So we formed an advisory group and from outside people, academic and business people, professional people. And the first question was, do you have an expense problem or a revenue problem? And their conclusion was expenses are in order for the size of the group and the institution, but you need more revenue. So then, what do you do? Sell more jelly, but we're a niche player in a pretty small market. Sell more vestments. Number of priests in the United States has dropped 30% probably in the last 10 years. So then what do you do? One of the brothers had entered with the idea of brewing beer. He had been talking about that quietly for 10 or more years. And so we thought, hmm, maybe he has a good idea. So we started from there, got together, and we thought, if we could brew a Trappist beer and give it as a Christmas gift to this board of advisors and package it nicely, I bet we could win them over. So <laughs> that's what we did. And then they were won over, and then they won over the Abbott, and then we, they, gave us, they encouraged us to research this project. With delicious and different beer comes a lot of popularity. Although exciting for the monks at St. Joseph's Abbey, the attention is a little too much. You know, uh, monks, monks describe monastic living as uh, low-impact living. <laughs> this is not low-impact living. So uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, to moving back to uh, a more regular monastic life. It is fun, and we actually, we're very grateful to people in Massachusetts for giving our brewery and our beer such a great reception. And I have to say, I'm very grateful uh, to, to you and all the media folks who have been working with us to kind of get the word out there about our new little project. And uh, we're grateful for, for the really respectful and uh, um, kind, really, treatment. 
If you live anywhere in the United States besides Massachusetts, you're out of luck. For now, the beer is only being sold and poured in our very own state. When, uh, when there's beer on the shelves of both the retailers and the wholesalers, then we could think about opening up another market. So we're waiting for that to happen. Um, so we have to, we'll, let that, we'll let that happen. That'll happen organically, I hope. Father Isaac and Father Damien welcomed us to a tasting after the tour with an assortment of cheeses to complement the brew. You know, that's a good combo. We actually had a, a beer expert, a beer sommelier, come over from Belgium who's writing a book about Trappist beer, so he came to taste the beer. And uh, he recommended the types of cheeses that we serve today, so they pair really good with this. Um, also goes with um, kind of rather simple food like some hearty soups, whole grain breads, fresh fruit. And always sniff before sip for the most refreshing taste of golden Belgium-style ale. Enjoying the fruits of their own labor while sharing, which is key to bring together people to form friendships. It's about sharing. It's about building relationship. Um, it's about, for us, it's about building a product that, uh, that in some way contributes to, uh, to human culture and enhances the, the human quality of all kinds of lives for a great variety of people. In Spencer, I'm Darcy Fortune, MPAC-TV.